I've been focusing on um, men this month because primarily because it was Father's Day, so I thought it would be nice to do a series of dad-centric uh, topics. And I had mentioned in one of my videos that I would talk about intermittent fasting, so I thought that would be a good one to do this evening. Um, intermittent fasting essentially is just a state of temporary hunger. Um, and what it does do is it forces, in fact, it empties the liver and the muscle cells of fuel. And so it forces the body to utilize fatty acids, stored fatty acids, uh, as a source of fuel for all biochemical processes. And it does this via ketones. So you've heard about, you know, a ketogenic diet, for example. That's exactly what this is. There are... Um, truly unbelievable benefits afforded anyone who's intermittent fasting, but I must just say that it's, it's different for women to the protocol used for men. And so I'm going to talk now for men uh, and for females, I would, I would run a very different protocol because women are much more sensitive to um, starvation, hunger, tem even if it's temporary. Um, so in terms of the benefits afforded by intermittent fasting, uh, things like mm, uh, reduction in fat mass and in oxidative stress uh, and inflammation in the body. And then a uh, huge number of benefits relating to things like um, energy, mental clarity, uh, cognition, memory, um, insulin sensitivity, immunity. You've got things like, I've got a list over here, um, you've got cellular stress. You, oh, the cellular stress response, so it actually improves your capability of, re, of um, responding to stress at a cellular level. Uh, it improves heart health and also increases muscle mass. So, oh, and not only that, but actually it increases our neurotropic growth factor. Um, and, and that, in turn, protects against neurological diseases. So, things like your Alzheimer's and the Parkinson's um, are uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Sorry, not neurological, neurodegenerative. Um, so those are a vast number of benefits uh, that would be a great reason to do it. And if you were going to choose to do intermittent fasting, there are a couple of different ways that you can do it. You could just not eat for 24 hours out of every seven. I struggle a bit with that, uh, but some people seem to be comfortable with it. Um, and some men, should I say. And then there is the 5-2 method, which is essentially two days out of every week, you would eat 75% uh, less calories than you typically would in a day. Um, so that's 25% on two days of the week. And then the other methods include things like um, not eating for 16 hours and then having a window period of eight to eat in, or it's not eating for 18 hours and having a window period of six to eat in. Um, or you could go as far as, I mean, you can go anywhere up to 22 hours. So you could decide just how much benefit you want, or you could decide how comfortable it's got to be that it works for you. And initially you might find that it's quite difficult. I found probably the first week was tricky just because I was, you know, getting hungry and I, just had to try and ignore it. And actually you can ignore hunger fairly quickly. If you just distract your mind with something before you know it, another hour is gone and you're fine. Um, so yes, an initial adjustment period might be required. Uh, and the other thing to bear in mind is that when you eat less food in a 24 hour period, you must make sure that what you do eat is very, very nutritious. And to be fair, it's not that you have to eat less food. You could eat the same amount of food, but in that window that you're choosing. Um, and that will still afford you all those benefits. So we've already said decreased mass, uh, fat mass, increased muscle mass. So you already know you're going to uh, improve your um, fat to muscle mass, uh, or ratio, should I say. Uh, and so you can bring it in, but what you typically find is that you end up eating your two meals or maybe even only one. Um, it must satisfy your need for nutritious food. Um, and if you bring in uh, enough satisfying foods, you typically won't necessarily need to snack in between the two. So for more detail, I'll run future uh, videos and I have done many before. Um, around more detail in terms of best practices for 
um, staying lean uh, and healthy and energetic. Uh, but for now, that might be a good um, a good uh, experiment for you is to try the intermittent fasting, see if it works. Skip breakfast. It's the easiest meal I find to skip. Uh, most people are very busy in the morning, so they don't really think about the fact that they're not doing breakfast. In fact, for some of my clients, they love it because it means they don't have to do any sorting in the morning. They're off to work uh, and then um, they can have their evening meal with their family and it doesn't really disrupt it. So give that a try. I hope that works. I hope that's been useful and I will chat to you again soon.